This week in our collective heads Wanna put an old rumor to bed Stereotype that you've all heard How we're all just angry video game nerds Most of us have actual jobs Kids and families and cats and dogs, yeah This week in our collective heads This week in our collective heads Welcome to This Week in Our Collective Heads. I'm Kevin. I'm Patrick. And we're here to give you the video game news as we do every week on Twitch, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock on Sundays, and then uh, Monday morning yep. on YouTube and podcast, podcast services around the globe. Mm -hmm. So we're here with that. Yeah. Uh, if you want to join us, if you're listening to this on YouTube or watching it on a podcast, you want to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m., you can do so and uh, join in. Uh, also, you can tweet at us at Twiatch, and uh, I'm at Mean Mr. Mustard. You're at Sabal. We do prefer you, if it's game wise, tweet yeah. at Twiatch. Right. Yeah. And we're Twiatch everywhere Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, everything. Except for Twitch. Except for Twitch. <laughs> that one, that one. The one that got away. It's right. One day we'll get it back. So yeah, so now that now that you've you've skipped past the first little bit where we tell you what you already Probably no. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. All right, so we'll get, we'll go ahead and get into, we have a bunch of backwards compatible news and free games right off the bat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just talk about the, the backwards compatible games that we got this week. So Mass Effect 2 and 3 are now uh, backwards compatible. Yay! And, uh, so now you can play the entire trilogy yes. on your Xbox One, you which can. is exciting. It's very it's very exciting. I think there are a lot of people who uh, who didn't get to play 2 or 3. Maybe they are just going to play Andromeda. Uh, maybe they just played 3. Now you have 1, 2, and 3. Uh, will all be uh, backwards compatible, and I think it's uh, I think it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, um, one of the, one of the the things because like I I kind of want to play this, but I kind of want to wait for Andromeda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I think Andromeda is going to be pushed out past March. I my my prediction okay. is I don't think that Andromeda is going to launch in March because what they've shown us so mm -hmm. far is. They they haven't really shown us gameplay. Yeah, like they've they've tried to show a story and then they showed. Okay, technically they showed us gameplay, but it was boring <laughs> gameplay. Yeah, and yeah. not not something that I'm excited about. So I th I think it's less ready than they're willing to let on. Yeah, I think that uh, I think the, the the gameplay that they showed uh, was was minimal, and I'm hoping that the reason it was minimal is because this is going to go back to true to form, where Mass Effect One and Two, where the story reigns king. It's all about story. It's about uh, it's about these characters, and the gameplay progresses you through that story. Um, not quite as bad as a walking simulator, but but bringing it to that core uh, uh, of telling a story and right. how important that is, and use the gameplay to tell the story, but the focus is on is on the story and your experience with it. Exactly, because in seven day was this week, yeah, and so they talked a little bit more about um, when Andromeda is going to be set, which is like. Uh, Basically, between the events of Mass Effect 2 and 3, yeah. there was an excursion launch thing that goes off to another place, and that's supposed to be uh, figuring out kind of what they're going to do next. Okay. And then this is, you know, they're, they're traveling at light speed, so the, the people that left are the same people that arrived. Um, at least I think that's how they handled it. And then... Um, well, are they, if, they're using a mass, if they're using a Mass Effect relay, then they'll be the same people. Because using a Mass Effect relay, it's it's very it's really ridiculously quick. So think yeah. like hyperspace in uh, in Star Wars. Right, but they're 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 setting up a relay, right? Like you have you have to get oh, to the place first. If you're setting up one now, it depends on how many light years. Because if if you're talking like our okay. closest star is prox uh, is uh, Proxima Centauri. Right. right, this is this is the Andro a different galaxy. This is 400 years after the events of the original trilogy. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's not going to be the same people because moving at light speed, you're still, you know, let's say that's the whole thing with um, uh, with a light year, right? Right. So if you're going to Proxima Centauri, which is our closest one, it's mm -hmm. 36 light years. Right. I'm not but, exactly right. But so time, time, the speed of light. But time for the inhabitants has slowed down to a point that it can be the same people that show up, right? No, because it'll take 36 years to get there. Right, but time won't pass for them. Time will pass. Slower, but it'll still pass. It's 36 years in of, of their time. Well, 36 years for us. It's going to be a little slower for them, but it's not instantaneous. But once you read... Anyway, 
Relativity. <laughs> I don't I don't know exactly how they're gonna handle yeah. that. But um, they talked about that and then one of the other interesting things that he said is that uh, Andromeda is not going to they're not going to handle Andromeda and whatever comes after that in kind of the same way that they did uh, the last one. They're 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 going to have each story be contained. Yeah. And I think that that's I think that that's good because I think it's really important. After yeah. how many after how many different branches they had in the first trilogy, like yeah, it would be really cool for everybody to get their own personalized ending. But with how many choices they let you have. Mm -hmm it really does need to expand and then kind of contract back down to a few choices. Yeah. So a lot of people are upset about this because they're like, no, I want my choices to matter. I think that to a certain extent, your choices will yes. matter, but what they want to be able to do is to be able to take a game and tell a story without having to worry about how are we going to handle this in six years? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I think that, that this will allow them to to tell a story yeah. without worrying about the mechanics and the logistics and trying to figure out three games before they've launched yeah. one. I think you're exactly right. And it's gonna, if they do that, what you're gonna get is a more concise story. You're gonna get something that's that's tighter. Yeah. Uh, you can tell a, a better narrative with that. Uh, if you're telling uh, a more open-ended story where you have multiple endings, you write yourself into a corner because then when you have a sequel, yep. what do you do? You either you either scratch everything like they did in in uh, Mass Effect, uh, the first Mass Effect, uh, and the second Mass Effect. Or sorry, after the first Mass Effect, where they're like, okay, here's here's what we're actually gonna do. Here's the, or sorry, that was into Mass Effect three. They're saying, okay, uh, we know you all got different endings, but this is the real ending. Right. And everyone's going, um, no. So okay, so my prediction. Mm -hmm. On how they're how they're going to handle this mm -hmm. is I believe that your choices will still matter, but in the whatever game comes next in the Mass Effect series after Andromeda, mm -hmm. you will not be playing the same character. Therefore, okay. you can have an effect on the world, yeah. but your personal decisions, your personal relationships, mm -hmm. don't necessarily carry. I think forward. it'd be excellent. I think it'd be excellent for uh, each each. Um game that they launch out not only being separate but yeah separate characters i think it'd be excellent and and then you have bleed through of the familiar characters that show up yeah. that are your, your well, I mean, side it, characters you could even you could even be playing a character that you met before yeah that'd be cool. that's 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 a possibility well, if the fans are really really liking a specific character yeah. they can go all right hey let's make him let's make a game of that guy uh so. and if you've already planned for that to be your formula it's not a spin-off you know, it's yeah. just, it's a continuation. It's like yeah. Worf showing up on Deep Space Nine. It's not a spinoff. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really awesome. It's, it's just <laughs> continuing the universe. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I've, I've been meaning to talk to you about this. Yeah. Let's do it on the air. Sure, why not? Okay, so I don't have time to play the Mass Effect trilogy. Okay. I want to jump in on Andromeda. Skip Mass Effect 1. Okay. Play Mass Effect 2. Okay. Jump in on Andromeda. And then skip 3. Okay, so just play Mass Effect 2. Play Mass Effect 2 because okay. Mass Effect 2 is amazing. And right. you'll get everything you need to get out of Mass Effect Trilogy okay. uh, with the second one. Because it, it, it leads in, it tells you kind of what happened. Right, right. You, you get to know Shepard, you get to know most of what's going on. You'll get to know the world without having to play three games. I, I promise you, okay. you're, the others, there's little plot stuff in Mass Effect 1, but they kind of talk about it in Mass Effect 2. I would highly suggest that. Now, now if you want to jump into Mass Effect Andromeda, you're probably going to be okay. I think there's a lot of people who are going yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, but if you can, if you have time, I would highly suggest playing Mass Effect. Okay. Too. Well, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to grab an Xbox One during the Black Friday stuff because some of those some of those deals look amazing. We've yeah. been we've been posting them on on our on our Twitter. They're going up on our website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, tweet, uh, tweet out the uh, the daily deals. I haven't come up with a succinct name for that yet, right. but but it's it's just tweetout.com. Yes. We're we're keeping you up to date on on deals that are coming out because some of this Black Friday stuff is amazing. Yeah, there's twenty seven dollars for uh, games at Walmart. Yeah, there's also a, a Google Doc, which uh, I'm. It, it's kind of in flux right now. I'm waiting for them to get more sources. Okay, but there's a Google Doc that lays out like. Um, I think it's like 25, 30 games, and uh, their prices at various locations. The best place to get them on Black Friday and like oh, backup cool. plans and stuff like that. So we'll tweet that out, and I'll also have that on the website. Yes, because that's excellent. Yeah, um, yeah, twenty-seven dollar uh, uh, new games. I mean, I'm talking Battlefield One, WWE Two K Sixteen, Two K Seventeen. Sorry, is is out there. Um, 
if you feel like going to Walmart Black Friday. Uh, and now there's now we also I've got been cyber, there on Black Friday. Don't yeah Cyber Cyber Monday of course is going to be coming yeah. up and everything. Um, but uh, I I think I was seeing some of the Xbox deals were like two. Like yeah. two bundle okay, games. Okay, there's, there's there's one that's that's uh, this is the one that I'm hoping to get is it's an Xbox One S mm -hmm. with an extra controller, mm -hmm. Titanfall two, and or no no Gears. Okay, for two fifty. That's amazing. That is outstanding. Um, so I'm, those controllers are like sixty bucks. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm a huge and, fan of the new Xbox. Gears Gears is the series that for me is the most appealing out of the out of the Xbox lineup. Yeah, I love Gears. Gears it's, is fun. Gears is, is is a blast, and I really like the the new Gears. They they've rebooted. A, They've rejuvenized the series, in my yeah. opinion. And I think they've done a, a fantastic job at that. Rejuvenated. Rejuvenated, yes. Um, sorry, it's, it's early in the morning. Uh, we're not, yeah, I'm not bit. a morning person. Uh, we also had Skate 3 as a backwards compatible. Yes. As we did all this tangent about Mass Effect and everything. <laughs> right. uh, additionally to, to, the, uh, to backwards compatible, Skate 3 is on there. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and Scary Girl. Yes. Uh, going briefly on Skate Three, though, uh, from now until the November the twentieth, mm -hmm. if you can get it, um, all the DLC for Skate Three is also free. Yeah. So I don't know what that entails. I know it has extra parks, extra objectives, and something else. Probably yeah. extra characters. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, like Skate Three is is a a revered game. I've not played it, but I like skating games. I have. Uh, my nephew loves this game. Okay. So well, yeah. Uh, so free free DLC free backwards DLC, compatible. Yeah. Go for it. It's it's uh yeah he got it for like twenty bucks uh, a while back and that's his go to Minecraft and that okay. because Minecraft and Terraria I mean you can you can get to a point where you're like okay what am I doing I've spent all this time what am I really doing on yeah. this and that game you can just jump in and and do these cool tricks and he mm -hmm. he loves he loves wiping out or getting in a fight because you can you can. Um, drop your skateboard and like go punch somebody, but every yeah, one of them sure, has like not? a taser. I mean, like, or <laughs> or if they don't have a taser, then they like beat All you right. up. So, well, not everybody has a taser, but like right, half but of them do. So that's that's pretty high odds. So we do we do what I used to do when I played Grand Theft Auto, which I will do when he gets old enough to play Grand Theft Auto, mm -hmm. uh, where you play uh, until you until you die. Okay. Uh, or the cops get you. Right. And then you switch players. Except with the skate game, we pl you play until you wipe out. We do three times. Okay. Three wipeouts, and then you trade. It's fantastic. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, and Scary Girl. Scary right. Girl's Scary Girl. also, uh, is also also compatible. Have you played Scary right. Girl? Uh, I have not played Scary Girl, but this is the game that I'm making up that is Scary Girl. Yes. So you start out as, as, a, as a goth emo girl. Okay. And um, everyone around you is like they, they kind of give you a little bit of distance, and they, they don't want to come too close. Yeah. And all social Just interactions, makeup. Your your social mm -hmm. uh, options, like people will occasionally try to interact with you. Okay. And you have uh, four dialogue selections. All of them are da da da. <laughs> you you don't get to say things. You don't say things. Uh, and so everybody's like scared of you, and like you're you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. why that is. And you're going through you're going through high school trying to trying to yeah figure out how to handle things. And then uh, halfway through the game, you switch and you become the demon that is controlling this goth scary girl. That's why she's not allowed to speak. Ah, uh, because the demon's not letting her. Exactly. This one has the anxiety resource that you have to like have to deal with too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the the anxiety mechanic. Yeah, it's a very difficult thing, and so uh, so then you you control that, and then scary girl mm -hmm. starts to slip out of your control, and uh, she starts to make friends. Uh oh. Yeah. Like with the popular girls. No, no. Okay. She she okay. starts she That's starts at the weird. she starts at the bottom and, and works her way up. Like you do. Right. And then uh, if you manage to help her become the prom queen and then tell everybody that prom is garbage, <laughs> then you get to ascend and become an angel. Ah. It's a great game. Great game. Great game that doesn't exist. Nope, not even a little bit. <laughs> but uh, apparently, it, it, there is a game called that. Uh, right. So uh, we also got uh, free games. You got free games. So uh, this weekend, Overwatch on console and PC, mm -hmm. both uh, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Overwatch is free this weekend. Yeah. Um, I checked it out when it was free, and I ended up buying it because I I like Overwatch. I like throwing bombs and 
exploding stuff. I think I think that's that's the only character that I've gotten behind so far. Um, I'm gonna play it a little bit more um, hopefully today. Uh, okay. I'm, sounds like I'm actually going to a Dream Theater concert later on, so that'd be really cool. I know. You lucky. I know. Uh, but uh, the other game was the Tom Tom Clancy uh, Rainbow Siege, Siege. Six Siege Six thing. So yep. I got to play this a little bit uh, earlier to uh, earlier this weekend, and uh -huh. it was it was better than I thought it was going to be. Um, it, it's it's kind of difficult because I want to run and gun, and you can't yeah, run and Rainbow gun. Rainbow Six has never been about the the fast. It's it's all about the tactical. Yeah. So this side this was me taking down. This is a this is a training training grounds thing, uh, okay. taking down some uh, taking down. Some and, uh, and and I just kind of I actually doing pretty good here. I think I get to spray and pray here in a minute. Um, <laughs> the, but uh, the other thing that tripped me out the training. These people are moving little mannequins, and mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't uh, the first time that I played it. I thought that I had to shoot them too, so yeah. I was going through and like and like shooting each one of them like in the in the in the brainstem, and uh, yeah, and, like then, you do. Like, and then it turns out I didn't have to do that. So uh, this is when I lost a little bit. No, they're still doing good. This guy tried to cover, and his head's right there. So. Um, I mean, I, I like covering. Liked, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're do, you're totally doing it wrong. I, I liked it uh, for the most part. Um, now, because uh, kind of, uh, cutting forward here a little bit, uh, this is a hostage situation again, training uh, aspect of it. But uh, taking down uh, these people who've who've taken some rich white people hostage, white woman hostage, and um, see that's and this this. Uh, what you just did is actually one of the big things that's about Rainbow Six oh, yeah. Siege is like the destructibility of the environment and being able to go through and do all that kind of stuff. I did that by accident because I didn't know how to pull up my charge. Nice. So you have you have a specific charge that you can pull out that that looks like uh, it looks like a like an inflatable mattress that you put onto a wall and it'll explode. And I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually hit the trigger button. I ended up killing the guy right uh, right. Now. So it worked out. Me here this is why we to. this is why we generally don't play first person shooters. <laughs> now, once like once I got the the feel of the game, uh, it was you know it, it wasn't this might not be up my alley, mm -hmm. but it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna let this play for just a little bit longer because there's a couple a uh, couple parts in here that are pretty cool. I think this is the part where I realized how to uh, or in a minute I realized how to use the charge. Um, but the I like the AI. The AI actually uh, the, um, not only the AI. But the uh, the effect when they throw down a stun like a flashbang uh, yeah. at you, so your entire man, screen you goes white. I know the entire. Like you may rescue the hostage, but man, <laughs> the the whole their cleaning bill is going to be outrageous. Yeah, it is. The whole screen goes white. You can't hear anything. It's mm. exactly what would happen in that situation. Yeah. Um, and I found myself trying to figure out like, okay, how do I. Uh, you know, how do I like position myself and trying to remember where was everyone when they were here when you know when I could see yeah. them? Um, here I am trying to use the actual uh, uh, actual charge device and figured it out. And it took me a real minute to figure out how do I how do I make it explode? Uh, but once I made it explode, in there, who was you know, taking care of the hostage, or you know, not taking care of her, but you know. Um, in charge of the hostage, right. um, so it's, it's it's really cool. The only thing that I thought was kind of was kind of weird was um, the uh, when you when you take hold of the hostage, you're like holding their hand, which I get, um, but it kind of ended up kind of looking kind of funky in the animation aspect of the game. I think I go up and. No. I'm pretty sure you just shot her in the head. Yeah, she died. Um, <laughs> Actually, I think I may have died. I don't remember. No, I, I died in that. That was the replay from their from their perspective. Okay. I went went forward to to see a bit. I mean, it's it's good. It's fun for what it is. If you want to run and gun, if you want something that's forgiving and just like fun gameplay, it, that's not the, what this game is. Yeah. It, but if you like the whole tactical aspect, if you if you always wish that you could be a SWAT team member, but you don't want to actually be a SWAT team member, which a lot of people like that they fast they're fascinated by the kind of the, by that aspect. There's repelling in the game. You get like mm -hmm. grappling hook and repel up nice. down. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a little tough. Uh, you can play that today. Uh, ends today. But ends today. Yes. But you can play it for free. Um, also this week, uh, speaking of free games, um, Gone Home is up on Itch.io, which is itch.io. Yeah. And they put that out for free. And 
I appreciate that because yeah. this is this is a game that did you played this right? I, I did play this. Uh, it's it's in the category that people talk about now of walking simulators. Um, it tells a story through uh, object interaction, and uh, you're you're a, a woman going home, gone home, uh, and kind of uncovering a, a mystery within it. And I think that this genre is is all about subtlety. And I think that it's it's good. Um, I think that a lot of people really um, dislike them because it's not about gameplay. Uh, kind of yeah. like Mass Effect we were talking about earlier. Uh, it's more about the story, and you're just kind of going through and, and interacting with things. It's like Myst if it was didn't have puzzles. Right. Um, like Gone Home in particular, though, I, I disagree that this one's a walking simulator mm -hmm. because it's not about walking. It's about it's it's kind of like we the way that we approach the Dark Souls lore mm -hmm. series is what you're trying to figure out is the lore and the world that she's in. Yes. So it's it's not about walking from one place to another to advance the story. It's about determining what's going on based on your surroundings, based on environmental clues. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, also there. Uh, I think it's Fulbright is mm -hmm. the company that did this, and they're getting close to releasing um, Tacoma, and I'm I'm starting to get excited about that one. I'm I'm curious, so we'll have to wait for that one. Also on Siege, Siege is actually not available on Xbox One. That's just PS4 and PC. Um, but yeah, if you if you have those, then you can yeah you can try it out. But if you and if you have a PC, then you can download it. Yeah, that's you have to have a game a PC that can run it. Uh, yeah. 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 That, that might be a problem. Yeah, if you're running Windows 95, you should <laughs> probably not even try. But I love the startup sound, man. You, you can import that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Xbox Insider is 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 kind of like their, their version of the, the beta testing type thing where they're like, hey, we've got new features. You want to try them out? And uh, that has long been an invite-only mm -hmm. situation. And as of this week, Xbox Insider is... It, it used to be the Xbox Preview Program. Now it's Xbox Insider. And it's an opt-in situation. So if you enjoy trying out new things, mm -hmm. you can do that. Yeah. And, and you have that option. I, I appreciate that because like it's, it's reaching out to the enthusiastic and being like, hey, help us make this thing better. Yeah. Give us comments. What did you like? What did you not like? Yeah. Um, usually, uh, from what I've heard of the Xbox Ones, and the PlayStation's kind of like this with the preview programs, um, you're you're not running an unstable like version. Right, right, right. Um, it's, it's not alpha yeah. or, or a test build. It's, Some people it's get worried about that. It's meant to be stable. Exactly. Some and people get worried about that where they're like, what if my game crashes while I'm doing this and that? Yeah, there may be a scenario where it happens, but for the most right, but, part, it's not. Well, the other thing is that most of this is, is just UI based. And it's, it's yeah. going to be stuff that's happening when you're wandering around in menus, basically. Exactly. So, yeah. Which I, I'm I'm probably going to sign up for this um, because with this there's no in, there's no NDA like the PlayStation one it's right. like hey don't talk, so talk about you it you can talk about it so I can actually check it out talk about it and see what see what's on there the only problem for me is if I'm if I'm using that then I'd want to also have one that didn't have the updated version and um, and be able to bounce between them but I don't okay. have two Xbox ones so. yeah. Uh, one day. So sad, one Patrick. Day. You don't have two Xbox Ones. <laughs> one day I may have two Xbox Ones. One in the office, one in the living room. Okay. No, like Maybe someday I'll have one. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. There's a possibility that WoW and Australis will be coming back. This right. is the private server that Blizzard shut down uh, because it's a private server. It violates certain rights of Blizzard, right. blah, blah, blah. And and at the time when they shut it down, they said, "Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about legacy servers and doing all this kind of stuff," and it it, it, it didn't happen. Yeah. And uh, the okay, so they they did like a, a full server poll, like all that information is still there, all the characters are there, mm -hmm. um, and so basically they waited until BlizzCon to see what Blizzard was going to do, see if they were acting in good faith. Yeah. And because at the time Blizzard said, "We're gonna take this down. We're looking into this. We're gonna be taking care of you." Yeah. And the, the people in charge of Nostorias felt like that if Blizzard is acting in good faith, we've given you the source code. Mm -hmm. We did all the hard work for you. Okay, let's wait. Yeah. And then uh, at BlizzCon, the only mention of it is Blizzard saying, this is really hard, guys. You don't know how hard this is. It's so, so hard. <laughs> Phrasing. And 
no, that's yeah. it's it's the the amount of work the amount of work that's that's necessary for a company the size of Blizzard yeah. to take what Nosorius did yeah. and publish it, and they know that it's no, it's, it's not hard. It's we have to allocate resources for this. We have to hire people specifically to maintain the Nostralius server. Okay, hire the Nostralius people. Yeah. Anyway, we're mm-hmm. we're not. <laughs> we love Blizzard, yeah. but this is a situation in which we are we are not on their side because, and so we'll see how this plays out yeah. because Nostrarius is they they're going to try to come back, and I don't know what would stop Blizzard from doing it again. I, I really hope they do. Now, having jumped back into WoW recently, mm-hmm. um, there are things that I think they've done a lot to improve. Mm-hmm. But the lower levels, you kind of blast through now. Yeah. So I think that some people don't want to do that. Some people, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it's it's uh, it's slow. It's a slow grind. But spending a month to get to, like, level 30, and I mean a month of, like, playing yeah. consistently, is yeah. a thing where I, can, I hit level 30 in two weeks um, in the new. And I was playing a couple days a week. Not yeah. that much. Well, see, so, this is, uh, like, back when I was playing EverQuest, mm-hmm. um... I, I remember the excitement of of like learning individual zones like yes. intricately, mm-hmm. and like I, I could I could still walk you from one side of the continent to the other because that was a thing that I had to do back then. And there's spe- specific weapons that for for this level they're really good and they'll last you for the next two or three levels. Yeah. If you if you go venture off into this area, if you do this specific dungeon. Um, there was one that I did when I was uh, in, back in Vanilla WoW. There was one that I did that was um, like I basically traveled, and it took me I think about an hour and a half real time to travel to a dungeon, did yeah. the dungeon three times to get the item, yeah. uh, and that item like I I had for another three levels or sorry four levels or five levels maybe. Um, because it, it made you really overpowered for the class if you got the specific item. Well, yeah. now it's like, oh, I could get that, or I could wait for like you know another three, four hours of gameplay, and yeah. then I'll have something better that a quest game. Well, see, and and another aspect of this, uh, Lord Scalawag in the comments is talking about how they want people to be able to to get up and join their friends as yeah. soon as possible because the the social aspect of MMOs. Um, I, I can appreciate that, and yeah. that that is that is a thing that's that's meant to be like that. Um, usually, I play MMOs as a single player game until like I make friends naturally. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll I'll group up with somebody, and then I'll be like, okay, cool. But yeah. like if you're okay, you're playing Guild Wars. Mm-hmm. I played, <laughs> I tried Guild Wars well, for I a little bit. I played in like a year. Right, right, right. But I tried it. Yeah. And didn't tell you. Oh, okay. Because I didn't really want to. Try to sure. schedule and arrange, up, and, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, like it's 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 complicated. Sure, I wanted to see if I liked the game for itself oh, sure. because I already know I like Patrick. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I think that uh, and Lord Scalawag here mentioned saying they want new players to to join with their friends and don't get frustrated and quit. And most MMOs do that now, uh, and I I get what they're trying to do because. Um, I, I play similarly to you, where for the most part I play by myself. Um, now I've been playing a lot with Whitney, where I'll speci- oh, I have specific character, a specific character where I play just with her. She has a specific character she plays on her own. Yeah. Um, but I, I played with uh, with uh, our friend John, and I played WoW with him. And the problem is, if you play um, six or eight hours a week. Mm-hmm. And the other person plays thirty hours a week. <laughs> You're not going to be near each other in levels. Yeah. So I, I get they're trying to speed people up, and they have um, specific things that blast you up to like level one hundred. Well, and that's, and, and uh, uh, Jake says that yeah. that he really enjoys the old design that slows it down and makes even the smaller goals feel much more, more oh, rewarding. Yeah. When you take down Hogger uh, back, you know, back in the day, uh, Hogger was. It's a, it's a, it's your first like elite quest or one yeah. of the first elite quests, and that was a big deal. And and he's he's just he's a giant hog, and he's got little hogs that are with him. He's like you know kind of the man bear pig kind of aspect yeah. of the thing, and that's your first time where you have to get a couple people together and 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 do that like a little yeah. pickup group. And and see the, these different aspects is why these two separate things need my opinion need to mm-hmm. exist because there are people who are coming to this game for different things yeah. and um 
basically Blizzard is kind of taking the the Apple approach. Yeah. We know what's best for you. We'll give you the best version and we'll take care of it. Sure. But there are people who want something else yeah. and that's what Nostarius is offering. Uh, you mentioned the that you like to play MMOs like as a single player game and then you have pickup groups or maybe maybe yeah, like I'll I'll, I'll make yeah. friends here and yeah. there, but I I want that to to build more slowly as well. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic mm -hmm. was excellent at that. It's one of the reasons that I really liked that is because I could play through and enjoy almost the entire game by myself. And when you yeah. got to a specific instance, like their, their dungeon things, they were instances, um, you had a, an easy queue system. Yeah, so I could play by myself for for hours, not needing anyone to help me. Now, yep. I could I could now, if I found someone uh, along the way who, you know, is a is a complimentary class, maybe they can heal me, or, or depends on what's yeah. going on. Now, yeah, we'd blast through it quicker, um, but that game was built as a single-player um, experience with an MMO on top, which yeah. is what a lot of people didn't like. I enjoyed it because you got a really cool story where you were the special person. I and love everyone being special. <laughs> and everyone got their own little special person like story where you're special and you're special and you're special. Yeah. Well, World of Warcraft and, and EverQuest and a lot of these other games, it's like you there's a battle going on, there's a big world going on and then and, and all these evil things yeah. and you're gonna help this king in PC or you're gonna help this person right. where in this in, in Star Wars The Old Republic it's like you're the apprentice to that king. And yeah, everyone else has or like an eighth of the other people have that exact same story, right? But you get your own little things. You could you could be nice. You can be evil. I really enjoyed it. So I, I need to go back and check that out since the new okay. expansion came out. I'll, I'll do go that for it. you guys. Yeah. Um, we also have some some uh, Pokemon Go updates. Yeah. Uh, so they did it again. I'm sitting here trying to touch the screen. <laughs> We're spoiled by touch screens now. Yeah. Uh, the the whole the whole surface because it is like a laptop, but you can also use the touch screen whenever you want, and it's really really easy to get used to oh, that. That's so nice. Um, anyway, so so the the Pokemon Go updates uh, is I, I think one of the more substantial ones that they've put out so far that actually added stuff instead of just breaking things and removing stuff which I appreciate. Yes. So uh, they have like daily quests now where the first time you, the first, uh, you you capture something first time in a day mm -hmm. and you use a Pokestop first time in the day. Then you get like little bonuses. Kind of cool. And then if, if you do it like ha X number of days in a row, then you get something else. Yeah. So I, I, I haven't actually gotten to that point. So uh, I don't know what those are going to be, but I'm, I'm, Curious, I'll kind of jump in there and try it out again for you guys. Let you know what I think. Um, I, I'm playing on here. This is the this is one of the uh, first uh, Pokemon. This is the Pokemon Challenge uh, with Google and everything. Um, it makes the regions look so much cooler. And yeah, you're gonna while you're uh, <laughs> while you're rock climbing. Sure, you're gonna you're gonna pull out your phone to catch Pokemon. Um, that dude's probably gonna die. He probably is. I'm probably yeah. Now I know that they've uh, they've also kind of nerfed uh, uh, how and while it shows someone driving and catching Pokemon, uh, at the same time uh, they have nerfed uh, even further when it comes to uh, when it comes to traveling. Yeah. When it comes to driving and using and using uh, your your uh, Pokemon Go app right. o um, over a certain speed. I also love how it shows all these people playing uh, in landscape. Yeah. Because that's never been a thing. It's never been a thing. That needs to be a thing. Yep. Uh, por portrait, yeah, I mean, it, it works for, for some things, but yeah, for, uh, yeah, landscape is what I want. It's what I think everyone wants. There's there's a hack that does it, or a, yeah. a workaround, but yeah. But um, so, so yeah, so, so you need to be <laughs> below a certain speed. And I, I did a little bit of testing with this. Yeah. Um, because like it used to be, you could just click the thing that said, "I'm a passenger. Just let me play the game." Yeah. Um, the the major issue though is that um, because it's not letting you do it at certain speeds, uh, in particular, people who are commuting don't get to swipe Pokestops on the way. Yeah. And that's really unfortunate. And I don't know why they chose to do that, especially with uh, I don't I don't know. So so there there are some they've added some some cool daily stuff. Um, and then they've restricted other things, yeah. and so it's 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 a typical Pokemon Go update. <laughs> it is in it, that some things are okay. That's that's cool, 
Uh, other things are, oh, why'd they do that? Yeah, I think for the most, most of the people that I know who who uh, have played and have been playing Pokemon Go for for a while, um, have really dropped off. Uh, I think that the constant need of like like you said the challenges i think that's coming a little late i, I hope it'll re regenerate or reinvigorate. You know, reinvigorate um all the things uh, i've been his thesaurus uh, like all morning it's what happens when i it when i'm tired um i'm i'm really hoping that it will uh it will get more people to try out the game uh, or try the game again yeah but i i'm wanting more Pokemon. I'm wanting more variety. I'm wanting... Yeah, absolutely. And um, they've actually been... Uh, there's been some data miners who have who have looked into the code that was uh, released with this and it looks like they're setting up for uh, second gen Pokemon. Um, one other thing that I really, really appreciate that they did uh, with, this, with this particular update is um, before you would get a maximum of four items from a Pokestop. Now they just spew out, and you can you can get like seven or eight Pokeball, and I'm like, yes, that's because, well, yes, I would I would specifically take routes, uh, or when Whitney and I are you know going out and running errands, mm -hmm. we would take specific routes where we just take a lap of uh, in the car like through a parking lot or something, yeah. getting Pokeballs, yeah, because there are, there are five five or six in the uh, madness uh, parking parking lot. Oh, nice. Yeah, so okay. so what we do is we'd start at the Wendy's, go to the Starbucks, <laughs> take a loop, and by the time we were at Ma uh, at the bar next to Madness, we go back to uh, back to Wendy's. We do like three or four of those, and you could catch trash Pokemon while you're doing that. Yeah, uh, Rattatas and everything. See, I don't I don't I don't catch trash anymore. Well, I, I haven't I, for a long time. I catch it specifically to level up, and that's it. I don't know why I would want to level up. Uh, to level up your, you tell me, to level up your character. Yeah. The higher level you are, the higher, better, different Pokemon you get. I guess. Like so, if you're if you're level but twenty-two, like, twenty-five, you're gonna have access to Pokemon you wouldn't have access to. See, I thought to, that capped out at twenty. Does it? Yeah. Okay, then never mind. Then I don't need to level up anymore. Yeah. So that, I I could be wrong. Um, Jake's talking about how how getting out and walking and. Oh yeah. I mean, like that—that that was one. That was the greatest thing that came out of Pokemon Go was getting us out and walking, and I, I, I appreciate that. Watching but, people out in the parks, like with family members and people, are, I, I have some older coworkers who are complaining, like you're still on your phone. Okay, you're outside, and this person just walked two miles. I was going to be on my phone anyway. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I appreciate that and just being able to to get out and and it was it was also a really fun weird experience for like the the three weeks of launch oh yeah it was like so many stories and so many fun encounters where like uh i don't go outside that's not a thing i do <laughs> but you know I, I took the girls out and we walked in the park and i found out that five-year-olds can only walk for so long before they get bored and then i was carrying two five-year-olds oh. that was another workout but but yeah, like it was, it, it, it's it's a really fun, interesting thing. Um, but because we play more games, we were able to see kind of the the flaws and the holes in the systems, yeah. and wish it was more of a game. Well, speaking of flaws and holes in systems, yeah, Mitomo also got a big update. Yes, it did. Um, and so now you can you can decorate your room, and and I can take you on as a sidekick, you and I can, can make you I can make you do embarrassing things. That's yeah, what I'm gonna do. You probably would. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, uh, you you can you can decorate your room. The the chat's been enhanced. The you can do more with with various aspects of it. Um, Some new costumes. Uh, well, the the costumes have been like a pretty constant thing, but like the I don't know. I, like, I haven't played I haven't played it a lot, so yeah, it's Oops, that's that's a spoiler. I'm gonna talk about that later. It's okay. <laughs> but like like I, I decorated my room. I'm I'm not oh, gonna no. pay you for another wall. Where is it? So chat. I think that's that's a that's a cool update. Chat, yeah. Yep. Adding adding chat, which I thought was the most interesting bit of this because Nintendo uh, is so tight when it comes to uh, their online environments, mm -hmm. and I know they want to do that to be family friendly. Um, so I was I was really surprised that this is on here. 
Yeah. Um, and what I'm really hoping on there is that they have, they let you do whatever, I haven't tried it out, I'll be honest, but I'm hoping they let you do and and say whatever you want on there and you can have a uh, profanity filter. Like like every game has done since like the like late 90s. Like yeah. Diablo 2 had this. Yeah. When you went online, you could turn on the on and off the profanity filter and you just say whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. My, my favorite... My favorite uh, like censorship profanity filter though, is uh, is the one that they threw up for Overwatch. If you say uh, "gg easy," then it changes it to a compliment and puts that out instead. Gg easy, what a good good game. Easy. Oh, it's it's a taunt after you win, and it was like all anybody was saying after a oh, match. Oh, okay. And so and it, puts up, it, like, it changes it to to call. compliment the compliment the <laughs> other team and. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. It was, it, was, it was pretty fun. That's hilarious. So let, let us know, by the way, if you guys are playing Mitomo, because I am not. Um, yep. I never got into it, but you know, if if it if it was robust enough, and then it also if Mitomo is part of Switch, which it won't be. If I could, if I could take the the costumes mm -hmm. that I have in Mitomo and bring them to my me. That's what I want be because right. I've got like I've got like a little Metroid I can put on my head. <laughs> I've got like Kirby shirts and yeah, it's that'd be cool. It's, it's that'd be cool. It could be fun. I know that's kind of you know it's kind of for mobile, but I would yeah. really like to see that on on Switch uh, or to be able to sync that account and then just use it on your that way you use the same avatar and, on both. And yeah, see that's the the biggest thing about Mitomo is that you set up the My Nintendo account, which is supposed to connect to other stuff. Please, God, let it happen. This time. <laughs> I, that is what I want. I hope that it happens. I need to make sure all of mine is set up and everything because I want to make sure that my Nintendo links out all my... Uh, I'm pretty sure I already have it set up, but I just haven't mm -hmm. tr like looked at any of it in right. so long. So uh, I want all you, my digital stuff. Also, I, I am I'm Twiatch, so I got that one. So that's that's mine because you already had like a, an account that was yeah. linked to a bunch of other stuff. So I went ahead and took Twiatch. <laughs> so if you see my little bug guy hanging out there, that's yeah, me. that's good. Uh, we also uh, got some Resident Evil uh, Seven speculation uh, news. Something. Yeah, this is this is Capcom doing basically what what uh, who was it when Square Enix was talking about? You know, we we sold seven million copies of Re of Tomb Raider. Yeah, what a failure. And so I'm I I have concerns about this because uh, Resident Evil Seven. They're saying that it will sell four million at launch and then continue to sell, which means based on they're they're talking about this on uh, on GameScoop at, at IGN, mm -hmm. they're saying that this means that they believe that this will at launch mm -hmm. be their tenth best selling game of all time. Those are their expectations. So, the problem with those expectations uh -huh. <laughs> is when you sell one point five million copies. Mm -hmm. Then you consider it a failure. Selling 1.5 million copies of a game at sixty dollars a pop, yeah, that's ninety million dollars. Well, and the the other thing is like, uh, there's not really. Okay, I don't I don't do a lot of investment. I'm I'm researching it, trying to figure out like how I want to handle this and stuff. But usually, as far as like retirement and accounts and sure. stuff like that, I I just turn it over to people who actually know what they're okay. doing on that. Um, I I don't manage it myself but uh i don't see the advantage of of making a prediction like this as a company mm -hmm. to your stockholders before it happens because there there are just way too many variables here well i think and the I, problem is you're, you're you're setting an actual actual number to it as yeah. opposed to saying we're really excited we think it's going to sell well they're actually trying to predict how many how, how much it's going to sell uh, I don't even know if there are pre-orders for this. Are there pre? I mean, there may be, but I haven't, possibly. I haven't, but but like I can I can see them I can see them saying uh, that's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait. For I this. can I can see them I can see them saying since Resident Evil Four, uh, it has been consistently growing and improving, and like our sales are expanding. Which do you know the best-selling um, Capcom game of all time? Uh, it's not Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Street Fighter? What no. Is it? No. It's Resident Evil 5. <laughs> oh, God. 
Yeah. Proving that it doesn't matter if you sell a lot of games, it's still not that great of a game. Um, <laughs> and that's that's kind of the awful part about it is that uh, you have to go like Mega Man's not in the top ten anywhere. Yeah. Uh, even even though it's an excellent game, it's yeah, not the and top, it's yeah. and 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 that's that's why we that's why we're always saying support your devs. Yeah. Support the games and the developers that are making quality content, and that's what we'll get. Mm -hmm. So. If you don't support it, you're going to continue getting crap because, uh, as Tommy Lee Jones famously said, person is smart, people are stupid. That's paraphrasing, obviously. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that... Uh, Actually, a person is smart. Yeah. People are dumb, panicky, stupid, idiotic. You know this. Yeah. I couldn't remember the entire thing, but... I have that audio thing that goes, like, I, I can't remember my mother-in-law's birthday. Sorry about that, Karen. <laughs> but, like, certain, certain audio, audio yeah. lines just stick. Oh, yeah. And that's that's a great one. Yeah. That's... Uh, it's true. Top ten, it, it, I would it, say, as far as quotes it's go. It's completely true, though. So the majority of people, as we saw, I'm not going to talk about politics, but we saw no, the election. We already, we already told but, you we weren't. But even with video games, uh, you have these top-selling games, top-selling movies that aren't mm -hmm. that great of a movie in comparison to other movies. Yeah. If you look and see uh, some of the best movies that came out this year or last year, it's, may not it's have about made... hype and marketing yeah. and, and all this all this other weird stuff that that kind of plays into it. Look how much Suicide Squad made. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nope. <laughs> it, it proving that that it, even even DC fans uh, that that I know were not happy with it. Now there are people who are huge fanboys that, that enjoyed it, fanboys and fangirls, and that's fine. Um, but even the people who, who are really big fans of DC, who are more critical, even they were like, I, I can't get behind this. I don't like the, the direction that they're going. Yeah. Um, same thing with video games. I mean, Resident Evil 6 didn't sell great, but it sold about what they wanted to sell of it. And it sold more than Resident Evil 4 on any... That, that's the other weird thing. With Resident Evil 5, um, I, this this is a bit of them messing with the numbers. Yeah. Because they had Resident Evil 5 across all platforms. And then for Resident Evil 4, mm -hmm. they just had the GameCube. GameCube, Which, obviously, then, that didn't sell as well as yeah, yeah. But like, it's when when you when you look at stats like that and you see, um, I, I'm not gonna argue with well, you about Minecraft. Oh no, 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 but well, I mean, you you had Resident Evil Four on Nintendo's first, uh, I would consider failure of a console, because Nintendo knocked it out of the park with the NES, the mm -hmm. SNES, N64 was still selling really well, even though in a lot of ways it was completely inferior to the PlayStation. Yeah. But it still sold really well because of your first party properties, because the 3D nailed in a lot of them. Yeah. But then GameCube came out, and GameCube flopped in comparison to everything else Nintendo had done. Well, then, but if you if you look at the sales for each of those individual yeah. consoles, it's Nintendo, Super Nintendo, like the Wii is the only one that goes up. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm hoping the Switch will all will well, uh, the Switch is going to sell better than the, the Wii U, obviously. Yes. Yes. But I cannot wait for that because I would like it to sell as good as the Wii, because I want it to sell as well as the 3DS. Yeah, I would. I would <laughs> love that because because of the ability to use it on the go, to use it, 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 it packs up so lightly that yeah. uh, that I think a lot of parents will look at that and go, "Wow, I don't have to buy two consoles. I can buy this, and they have everything they want." If they, you know, as yeah. as many of you parents probably know, um, you know, if you're if you're taking a long road trip or if you're in a doctor's office, you know, if you've got that game console that a kid can play to keep them entertained for a little bit. Um, and for that to be the same console that they have at home, that's that's two for one. Yep. So I'm really excited about it. So, so uh, let us know what you guys are excited about. Uh, and if you're excited about the Switch, if you're excited about for uh, anything else that we, that we talked about, what do you think about Resident Evil 7? Because I can't wait for it. I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> also, uh, if you're if you're interacting with us on Twitter, mm -hmm. tell me what you think about the the Ghost in the Shell trailer that dropped today. Yes, because uh, you, you seem to be kind of ambivalent. I haven't I haven't seen the trailer yet. I mean, well, I'm I mean about about, about the about the, itself, the, yeah. the series versus the original. Yeah, like how how one to, one to ten? How highly? Like how I, how deep are your emotions on Ghost? Okay, see Five? that's that's the difference. Okay, so you you can you can tweet at me <laughs> and we can talk about stuff. So please do that. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Thanks.
Thank you for watching This Week in Our Collective Heads. If you want to watch some like movie reviews, something a little different than what you're watching, check out Script Doctors right here. If you want reviews of the Gold Plus Roundup games, those are right here. Yeah, so we'll check you guys later, but please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Indeed. We love you.